So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our regular series. Because the movie's done. Just the post-production is now happening, which is not so much of work because other people are doing the work for me. You know, whether it's special effects, whether it's music, whether it's Foley. So yeah, and home so far 90% November 13th at 11 p.m. on YouTube live premiere Kira's channel for meeting Ketu. And everybody's asking, why? Why that particular date? Hello, it's Diwali the next day. That's all I did. So because I'm going to get all the music done by the 10th, 11th, I'm like, I got to get it out as quickly as possible. So 13th was the best day. So doing it then. So anyway, today we're going to be discussing Sun and Saturn in the second house of your birth chart. Okay. So what happens when their conjunction is in the second house? And as always, if you do not know, if you have this particular conjunction, what sign it's in, what nakshatra it's in, all these astrological details, for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my books, consultations, and link to my academy, Maghavetik Astrology Academy, where I, I currently have Keras vlogs that I'm going to be making video this week, finally, after two weeks of absence there. Although I made a video on Jupiter... Uh, no, no, no. I made a video on Dasha activation there just now. So, second house with Sun and Saturn. So what is the second house? Second house is speech, family, pride, okay, possessions, what you like to possess, fame, earning money. So now you have Sun and Saturn conjunct here. And in Vedic literature, Sun is the father, Saturn is the son. Although Saturn is kind of like a stepson in a way. Because Saturn was created through the shadow of Sanjana, the actual wife of Sun. So in a way, you can say it is his child. You can say it is a child from a more darker entity of, you know, the wife. You know, so anyway, what happens when they're combined in the second house? So this particular conjunction is going to be a battle between telling the lie or telling the truth. Because whenever Sun is in the second house, I mean Saturn is in the second house, Saturn aspects the second house, a person becomes an extremely creative liar. They can lie by showing misery. Like some of these people who can, you know, may ask for food from people at their work, from uh, and they will give this feeling of, you know, they don't have much money, so everybody will help them. Well, when you go to their home, it's like a big mansion. But then there's a fight because sun is there. When sun is in the second house, a person feels obligated to tell the truth. Like, I need to tell the truth. This is my dharma. I can't live without myself. You know, imagine if sun was not to come up from the east tomorrow. And sun says, no, no, I'm going to come. Imagine what devastation would occur if he didn't warn us. And I'm not, I'm, it's not like he's going to warn us, but I'm just saying if he didn't, that's where Sun feels obligated. So when you have these two arch enemies together, one becomes, um, one will lie for their, uh, you know, selfish benefit to attain money and especially extracting money through professional network circles. On the other hand, these are the type of people who will, when it's really, really necessary, they will tell the truth. So again, it's, it's a battle. And you will see if Saturn, okay, is below the degrees of the sun, then a person will be more prone to lying. When Saturn is above the degree of the sun, the, a person will try to tell the truth more. But one thing you will see, these people are very dedicated, very hard-working individuals when it comes to raising family, looking out after the people of the family, people of the lineage. They're very responsible in that sense. They're not the type of people who will take advantage of the family. For them, family is this, like this kingdom for them. And also you will understand, just from my last video, is that Sun-Saturn conjunction will bring sacrifice to the sign of Capricorn in the chart. Wherever the sign of Capricorn is in the chart, 
there will be some sacrifice that one will make towards that. For example, let's say Sun and Saturn are in the sign of Leo. Okay? That means this person will have to sacrifice someone that they love and may marry somebody that the parents or the family members wanted because that's who they loved the most. That's who they were interested the most. Although like outside of Indian culture, that's really not going to happen. But again, it could happen. But I'm mainly talking to, you know, like the, from the Indian cultural perspective where arranged marriages are still a thing. And actually, it's funny. It's becoming more of a thing now because people are realizing that having that arranged marriage is actually benefiting more because, you know, I'm not saying it's because of astrological reasons, but something is there. You know, I, I and just last year, I, I either saw some show or some article I read. I, I can't put my head around it. Now, on the other hand, this is a person that will deal with some karma related to ancestral land. There will be some major issue in trying to attain land, whether you may have to fight with your siblings, you may have to fight with a, you know, uh, some family member like aunts or uncle regarding the land. But there will be that notion. And then also, usually this will not always happen because I have not always seen it except in the sign of Cancer, Leo, and Aquarius the most, where a person is really wanting to engage themselves in government after the age of 37. After 37, suddenly they feel they become more patriotic. They become more conservative. But again, uh, those things can change based on the sign of Nakshatra. But one big thing you will see, these people love to collect artifacts of government. Like, for example, there's some old war sword or gun that is going on auction. Like, let's say from Civil War in the United States. This is the person who will love to possess that. They love to collect older items that are connected with either kingship or related to government. And one of the best things I would say about this thing is, and and I would really consider the best thing is that this these people become savers. They become quite stingy. They're not willing to just spend money on anything. For them, when they have accumulation of wealth, they feel secure. So if let's say your spouse has this and they are the ones who are always stopping you, no, don't do this, don't do that, and you're frustrated with that, try to understand with try to understand now through this conjunction that for them safety on a family and the thought of rainy day is always there in their head you can't take it out so give them some slack that okay i get it i get it but what you should do is make a negotiation that, listen give me a point of savings you want before you can become more relaxed so if they say well i want to have at least a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account before you know we can just spend on other things Okay, fine. Let's work towards that. Let's make it happen in five years, three years, six years. And once you get it, once they have a deal and a deadline and a particular number to achieve, then it becomes much easier for them. But if you don't discuss this, then they're going to be very stingy towards holding on to that money because there's that fear with Saturn that I will lose my status and my wealth because Saturn, is, uh, Sun is status and wealth okay so anyway guys this is my small analysis of sun and saturn conjunction in the second house if you're new to my channel subscribe below so you don't miss these type of videos and if you want to know where all your astrological details are and my books reports consultation including my academy check out the links here and make sure you're here on november 13th on live premiere of meeting ketu bye bye